Eventually, I heard the murmuring of the stream. The forest parted, and a suspension bridge appeared. Satoko was crossing dangerously, wobbling as though she might fall at any moment. And when I stepped onto the bridge, it swayed a lot, causing Satoko to stagger and fall on the spot. Satoko, are you okay? Don't! Don't come near me! You! You murderer! Satoko shouted, her hatred made very clear. It was sad. If words could cut, then this warmth flowing from my eyes would have been blood for sure. Why did you turn out this way? Keiji-san, I... I really, really liked you. I wanted to go up to her and give her a hand. But the distance between us was uncrossable. If I got any closer, Satoka would start shouting again. And say things that would hurt me deeply again. So... I couldn't approach any closer than this. Satoko, I don't... I don't know how things turned out like this either. But I can say this. I wasn't the one who killed Rikicha. At least that is true. Please stop being so absurd! How do you expect me to believe... Anything someone who can't even rely on his own memories has to say! I tightened my hands in the fists. This was mortifying. I wasn't crazy. Kinami Zaho was crazy. Ever since I wandered into it, lost on that one night. This insane world, where I was at the festival when I wasn't, and the uncle I killed was alive. Where death would come just by wishing for it. It was this world's fault! Mion and Rena started acting strangely, like they were possessed by something, too. And Coach wouldn't believe anything I had to say. And even Satoko, who I should have protected, was yelling at me like this. Was the price for killing a man supposed to be this high? Was I really going to be forced to stay in such a bitter world? I did the right thing! At least I wanted to! So then... Why? I hated it. Every time I asked why, the days Satoko and I enjoyed in peace went so wrong. Satoko, please believe me. I'm not a, a murderer. Then what is that hatchet for? Can you give a convincing explanation for that? Is, is this hatchet scaring you? Okay. I'll throw it away. That's what you want, right? Satoko didn't nod, but she seemed to be in agreement with that proposition. I clumsily took the hatchet out of my belt, then dropped it over the side of the bridge into the stream below. There. It's gone. Now, you'll listen to me, right? You think I'll let my guard down? Just because you got rid of your weapon? Keiji-san, you're strong! It would be easy for you to strangle me with your bare hands. Like hell I would ever want to kill Satoko. You... You idiot. Then what should I do? Should I put my hands on my head? Yes! Why don't you? Please, put your hands on your head and face the other way. It was a cunning plan. Much like the one she used during club activities. Putting my hands on my head and turning away would mean I couldn't attack Satoko very easily. I immediately acquiesced to her request, since it would make her feel better. Is this all right? Please, listen to what I have to say. Satoko stood up, then carefully approached me from behind. And then, she actually came right up behind me. She was so close, and yet I was so sad that I wasn't allowed to turn around. I sort of think I understand that it isn't your fault, Keiji-san. Uh-huh. I think, probably... You have just been possessed by something evil. Until before, I thought Kiyuchi-san was a killer. But now I know. After looking at your eyes. I could hear that Satoko was still crying. But her voice was gentle just the same. Kiyuchi-san could never kill anyone. 
Something simply possessed his body. It made him do evil things. Was she speaking literally right now? Or was she trying to admonish me? I couldn't tell. Come to think of it, maybe... Maybe they... were possessed, just like Keiichi-san. At the time, I was only thinking I would be killed. So I didn't think about it. But now I understand. That was... Work of something evil that possessed you. Satogo? W what are you... It was less like she was talking to me, and more like she was talking to herself. Like she was confessing at my back. I understand. You know, it isn't like I haven't experienced it myself. Satoko's voice started to become mixed with sobs. Her pained voice tore at my heart. But I didn't know what Satoko was talking about. I climbed to the top of the ritual storehouse once. It was a few years ago. I know. I understand. This is Oyashiro Sama's curse. His judgment for messing up the ritual storehouse and forsaking my best friend. Oyashiro Sama's curse. My father and mother, too. They vanished in that muddy stream. My mean aunt died too, but then Nini, who loved me more than anyone, ran away from home. And then, and then, Keiichi son transferred in. And I thought I'd finally gotten my fun life back. But this time, Keiichi son was possessed, and even Rika got killed. <laughs> There's something I heard once. Oh, yes, it was Sama. When he really curses someone, he doesn't kill them right away. He goes in order of your closest friends, and after killing them all, he kills that person last. So, Keiji san, the curse got you too. <laughs> I'm sure that Reno san and Mion san will be cursed next, and then he'll kill and be killed. No, no more. No! C calm down, Satoko. There is no curse. Nobody's trying to torment you. When I turned around, I was thrust away with amazing force. Given my hands were awkwardly placed on my head, I couldn't take the fall and lost my balance. And I'd been pushed not into the bridge, but to the side. Towards the stream. No. Uh, this can't be happening. Uh -huh. As one last miracle, I was allowed to grab a cord hanging from the bridge, far below me was the stream. We were pretty high up, and below were rocks of all sizes. If I fell, it clearly wouldn't be pretty. The entire bridge was tilting under my body weight. My frail little grip probably wouldn't last another minute before my fingers had to let go. Uh, Satoko! Uh, Satoko! I didn't understand myself, what I meant by shouting her name then. Was I asking her to save me? Or was I asking her why she did this? Finally, everything came back into focus, and I saw Satoko. And I was surprised at what an odd expression she had. It was the first time I'd seen it. It was an expression of righteous anger, meant only for those who needed to die. As she screamed, she jerked the bridge to and fro. She didn't have to do that. I was going to fall anyway. I won't... I won't lose to the likes of you! I won't lose... to some stupid curse! I will never, ever lose to you! You took everyone! I will never lose to you! Not ever! Sachoko, please, just let me say one thing. I don't know what my face looked like at the time. But it seemed like it was enough to quell Satoko's agitation. I know that what I did isn't exactly praiseworthy. No. In fact, maybe I should never have done it at all. But I did it because I wanted you to be happy. Please, just believe that. 
very, very end, you're still pretending to be Keiichi-san! Satoko didn't seem to have any more desire to listen to what I had to say. And for that to happen at the very end like this was tragic. I didn't do any of it so you would praise me. If it made you happy, that was all that mattered. We were nothing. Without your smile, we were nothing. So, after I disappear, please, smile. If you can get on with your new life by my dying, then please, just smile. Can't you at least promise me that? And those were the last words Satoko ever said to me.